Hey, it's me, Alex. Welcome back. We are going to move on to the art history section of the show. Art history, love it. These are all art history books. That's what I studied in college. Starting off, kicking the whole thing off with a surrealist artist named Joseph Cornell. The art of Joseph, this is a tiny book I have about the art of Joseph Cornell called Dime Store Alchemy, written by Charles Simic. At the beginning, it starts off with a little bit of information about him. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some of that to you now. <clears throat> Joseph Cornell was born on December 24th, 1903 in Nyack, a town on the Hudson River, so that's close to New York City. His parents were Joseph and Helen, and he had three siblings. But no matter what happened, uh, Joseph's mother made sure that he was well-educated, so she made sure she had enough money for private school. When he got out of school, he got a job with a textile manufacturer. Textiles are like clothes and like blankies and things like that. And he, what he would do is he would walk around New York City. And so this is when like the story of Joseph Cornell really starts. He would walk around trying to sell little pieces of textile to people. And he started noticing all the stuff that's just in the city, right? So he would go by bookstores and he would go by record stores and he would go by junk stores and he would go by all these places, okay? And he started collecting all these little things. And he also started to become a kind of like thoughtful and um, home homebody kind of person. So as you can imagine, he's going around the city collecting these things and then taking them back home and kind of just studying them, if you will. They uh, eventually moved to a house at, all together in Bayside, which I don't think is in Manhattan, but I could be wrong. I think it's like out, outside. And he lived there for the rest of his life. And that's where his studio was. And he never left New York City ever. And he became quite famous. He knew all the artists. He could have gone to Europe. He could have gone everywhere, but he never left, okay? Um, and it says here in 1931, Cornell discovered the Julian Levy Gallery and he discovered the Surrealist Movement. Um, surrealism is really cool. I have a book right here on it. It's like, if you ever saw Dolly and the Clocks or Fantasia, that's a very surrealist thing, okay? So, surrealism. Realism would be real, right? Stuff that just looks real. Surreal is like, okay, it looks real, but there's something wrong. What is it? Um, and that's kind of what his boxes are like. Now, let me show you some of these montages, if I may. It's literally a box, like all this stuff is inside the box. It's about this, this deep, right? And so it's two dimensional or three dimensional, meaning it, it pops out. Inside you see the background is a map and some words. Also there's a bird um, sitting on a little perch and there's a little piece of wood just kind of coming out, okay? That's, okay, this one's another bird. You know me, I'm a bird nerd. So of course I love Joseph Cornell. This one's an owl with a little piece of wood again. All right, now they get kind of funny. This one's great, love it. Okay, this is a little wine glass. This is a tiny little head. Who knows where he got that? It's like a little shrunken head. Um, and then there's a, a glass box around a, looks like a, a globe. Oh yeah, it's got a map. It's got maybe like half a globe. There's a pipe and then there's little candles at the top. There's also a little globe in the glass. This one's really cool. There's a newspaper print of a, of a dancer. There's a drawing of a box. There's a cutout of the same dancer. There's a bracelet. And then there's this crazy like Dungeons and Dragons cube. More birds, this one's cool. Birds sitting on a perch. Um, this one kind of looks like a beach house. There's a little ball connected to two rods. This looks like a thermometer. This is a ton of birds and he cuts out pieces of magazine and he made strips of them and the, the magazine strips have birds on them. And then he also cut out other tiny birds, but in the shape of the bird and put them on perches in front of the magazine strips. And so all of these were in boxes that are like this deep, okay? I wanna read you part of this book, uh, Dime Store Alchemy, is that there are little poems in there and little stories about Joseph Cornell. This is called Miss Delphine. On the streets Cornell walked 40 years ago, there were still medical leech dealers, importers of armadillo meat and ostrich eggs. There were people like Miss Delphine Binger who collected goose, turkey, and chicken wishbones so she could boil them and polish them, then decorate them with charms and ribbons. She sent them to presidents, movie stars, famous politicians, 
In the same way, Cornell sent gifts of scraps of paper and odd objects to ballerinas he loved. Interesting. Examples of boxes for the next assignment, okay? Okay. This one is called Matchbox with a Fly in It, Shadow Box, Music Box, Pill Box, a bot box which contains a puzzle, a box with tiny drawers, navigation box, jewelry box, sailor's box, butterfly box, box stuffed with souvenirs of a sea voyage, magic prison, an empty box. This box just is again one of Joseph Cornell's boxes. It's just a box with a bunch of little eggs in it. And this box has a scary doll with a bunch of twigs. If you feel so inclined, this would be an easy one to copy. Now, your assignment, should you choose to accept it, is to gather yourself a box. Now, your box doesn't have to be a rectangle box. For example, I found this box that my friends Benedine and Edie gave me. Um, this box would work. It could be any size box. But I'm going to use this box because it's bigger and I want to fit more stuff in it. I might have collected some things, but first I might find, and, and this is just a stash of papers I always have because I like to uh, tear things out of magazines and I suggest you do too. I might find a little boat picture I can put at the back. And next to the boats, ooh, I like this one, of some mountains at the bottom. Boats and mountains don't go together. Says who, me, not me. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna need tape and I'm gonna need string, but I don't have tape and string. So I'm gonna make my box later and I'm gonna show it to you, especially because I don't want you to copy my box because I want you to have your own ideas. But I'm just gonna show you some things I collected. This is Science, you might have met him before. It's my seal. He's gonna sit in there. He's definitely gonna need a rock from Utah. Um, now I might take some of little cardboard cutouts. I might hang them with my string. And then of course, I have to have Kylo Ren as a part of my box. It's just a thing. Oh, now, like I said, this box isn't done yet because I haven't taped anything down or strung it up, right? So once I do that, I'll be able to just go, hey, here's my box. But right now, everything just falls out. So that's your art history assignment slash art assignment. If you complete one, please send me a picture of it or send me a video of you explaining your box and I will splice it into the next Miss Saxon's No School Show because I'm learning how to do cool stuff. I also suggest you learn how to do cool stuff during your quarantine as well. <laughs>